I think it was mid-January 2015. Two of our volunteers posted in a group conversation we had saying, we were called for a splatter incident. We're on our way there. In rescue, splatter usually means attending a dog or cat run over by a car. I remember staring at my computer screen for hours, waiting for an update from them. I expected anything, anything but that. They arrived and started sending us photos from the scene. I panicked. I don't remember feeling anything else but panic. It was one of those neighborhoods of Athens that remind you more of a village than a big city. The guy had tied its puppy's neck and back legs with a wire and had her chained next to a truck right outside his house. As she kept growing bigger, the wire was entering her flesh, leaving her neck and legs almost split in two. By the time our volunteers arrived, the wire had reached the bones and the healthy flesh around it had started rotting. The neighbor confirmed who the abuser was, but once the police arrived, he suddenly wasn't so sure and never gave a statement. The owner went unpunished, and our volunteers left with the puppy in the back seat of their car. The worst thing is the horrific smell they describe coming from the infected flesh. We had never seen anything like it. Neither had our vet, who we called on a Sunday begging for help. She never made a sound while the wire was removed from her neck and legs. She looked like she didn't even know she had been abused. She spent about two months at the clinic. Even though her neck was the most gruesome to look at, it was going to be all right. Her biggest concern was the infection in her legs. The wire had hit the bone and for the first month we were terrified that she would lose both of them. We visited her every day at the clinic and took her for small walks in the nearby park. She was the kindest, sweetest dog ever, gentle, friendly and loving. Her wet kisses would make our hearts melt. People kept staring at her every time we took her out and we would stare at them back asking, if it was your neighbor who did it, would you report him? Her legs finally healed and we were so excited. She left for her foster home all happy and proud, wagging her tail. Apart from the scars on her body, there was no evidence at all of all the pain and injustice she had known in her past life. If you didn't know about her, you would guess that she was just another spoiled, silly puppy. She loved to run free in the garden, play with her toys and roll in the grass. Typical things that every dog loves and should be entitled to meant a lot more to her. All that freedom and joy she experienced were so awesome to watch. She would run and you could almost see her breaking free from the horror, the misery and the ugliness of the first months of her life. She flew to Holland to be with her new family a couple of months later. They had made for her a necklace of ornament rocks and they had already picked a name for her, Jade. Because a jade rock was the first one Gaia had picked for her necklace. When they picked her up from the airport, she was so scared. They gave her the necklace made of jade and crystal rocks, and they say it made her much more confident. After just one day, all the rocks were broken, so they got her a new one with little fake crystals all over. Kaya says that Jade now has more necklaces than she does. Buying her new ones is like an addiction. It's been more than a year now that Jade lives with her family in Holland, spending her days playing and running on the beach, laying on the couch with her friends and being spoiled as deserved. Lately she started swimming. She was always a little bit afraid of the water, and so one day Gaia went in hoping that she would follow her, and she did. When I asked the family if I could make a video of Jade's story, they were so excited. Kaya sent me every photo and video she had of her and said that she wanted everyone to know how beautiful she has grown and how much she has changed, physically and emotionally. And so did I. I want everyone to know that your next door neighbor's backyard trash can be someone's treasure. That all those unsocialized sad creatures living a life they don't deserve can become someone's loving companion. Our best friend might be hidden somewhere in a shelter or out on the street or chained in a backyard. We just have to look close enough and see not their present, but their future, their potential. They all have a potential of becoming a loving, loyal and happy pet. 
And once you rescue them, they will definitely rescue you right back.